So, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our first Lunch and Learn webinar of 2019. The title of today's webinar is Typography and Fonts Masterclass. And who better to take us through this really important aspect of any design project than Cordron Master and Freeline Designer Mo Yogi? Before I hand over to Mo, I'd just like to ask you to open the Go To panel on the right side of your screen and under Attendees, just click on the raised hand sign. This is just to let us know that you can all hear us fine. Also in this panel, you'll find the Questions tab. Please feel, please feel free to ask any questions along the way, and we'll try to get as many of these answered as possible during this session. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Mo. I'm hoping you can all hear me okay. So I'm just now have a look at the chat board. Pardon if you can kind of give me a sense that my audio in, and screen is coming through okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so first off, I'd like to uh, wish everybody all of the best for 2019, of course. This is our first lunch and learn session for the year. And of course, uh, a big thanks goes out to Joe Levins, who's the mastermind behind the series. She's a little under the weather, so we wish you well on your recovery. Um, yeah, and, and uh, also, I'm very excited to um, be co-hosting with um, a hero of mine, Suzanne Smith, who um, puts together a phenomenal series of really cool uh, webinars and tutorials and other bits and bobs for Corel. So do check her stuff out as well. I'm um, really compelling stuff from Suzanne, so I'm, I'm really excited to be co-hosting with her today. So jumping straight in, um, confession, from my side is I'm a typography nutter like possibly many of us on this call. And um, I'd like to uh, perhaps share some of the learnings um, that I've had um, with uh, having played with typography for pretty much most of my creative life as, as I suspect is um, the same for you. I mean, it gets pretty bad in my case in, um, to the point where I have an app which basically is a game that, uh, you know, you have to guess the difference between Helvetica and Arial. Yeah, I do not have a life. I'd like to ask um, a quick question, um, if you don't mind, and if you could pop, uh, or two, if you don't mind popping that into the chat pod to get the conversation going. And the first is, um, how are you dealing with type today? So type management and all of the massive um, collections of fonts that you have, um, do you have a specific methodology that you use? It would be really great to hear from you. I'm not quite sure if I can see the chat, chat part necessarily from my perspective, but if you could kind of just kind of give us a sense of what that is. Yeah. I can see the chat box and the question box, Mo, so if anything comes through, I'll, I'll let you know. Lovely stuff. Um, thanks, Suzanne. And then, of course, um, the next question for you guys is, have you heard of, Corel's font manager. Now, what Corel is great at doing is, is offering tremendous value um, in terms of when you purchase the product, you get all of these bits and bobs, and sometimes it can be a tad overwhelming. But if, if, you, know, if you take the time and, and kind of delve into some of these tools, you'll find great value. And one of those um, unsung heroes, I would say, is of course um, Corel Font Manager, and I'd like to kind of have a conversation about it. And start right there. So, um, what is Font Manager? Font Manager, as the name suggests, is going to allow you to manage fonts um, and then some. So, it does a whole host of things. I'm going to um, shunt the Go to Meeting toolbar to the side, so we have more screen real estate. Um, for the stuff that's up, um, up front and center, which is font manager in this case. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to walk you through um, some of the methodology that, that I use and the value I get um, from font manager. And I'm hoping that, that you, you're kind of able to, to kind of extract the same level of value. So um, some of the things that um, I found valuable from, uh, from 
from a fund management perspective, especially the way that Corral has tackled um, this rather um, challenging um, issue is, of course, the ability to not only um, preview and manage and um, install and uninstall fonts, but um, to go even further where one is able to look at um, the glyph sets, the stylistic sets, um, you know, if you're dealing with open type fonts, uh, for those of us that are not familiar, what open type is is probably, um, it's, it's a good word in, in our vocabulary as creatives and designers, because what it allows for is it allows for uh, beautiful stylistic sets and ordinals and real fractions as opposed to the superscript and the subscripts that we've had to rely on in the past. Um, and, and then some. So a whole host of value. And of course, uh, one of the big value propositions, of course, is being able to use the same font on the Mac as you would on a PC. Um, so you have none of those challenges anymore, et cetera, et cetera. So a really, really good um, type format. And, and I've been using it um, as, as far as I can religiously since it, since it was um, released um, a good few years ago. So we, we'll be kind of exploring that as well as we walk through. So what I'd like to do is that I, I'm going to make the assumption that most of us have not used um, font manager and it's kind of give you a sense of how Corel has um, deployed a really, really interesting font management tool. So I fire up, fired up font manager and um, in fact, before I, before I go there, I'd, I'd like to um, state that all of the tools and wherever possible, of course, you know, if, it, if it's copyright and we're not able to share it with you, but wherever, um, you know, Corel might have um, copyright over, over content, for example, the, the content that I've used, I try and make it as, as open source as possible so that uh, post the webinar, you're able to um, download the files um, and, and the Corel team will share that with you guys. So you can go off and play with it yourself. Um, and as is the case with the, with the one hour webinar, um, you know, we try and keep it as succinct and as energetic as possible. So, you know, if I'm, I might um, flip through things rather quickly and you can obviously go ahead and, and try it out for yourself uh, post the webinar. So some valuable resources that I, I thought I'd share straight off the bat. Um, in Corel's Discovery Center, um, there's a really nice tutorial or, or discussion piece, I should say, by Mark. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his surname. I'm, 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 I'm suspecting it's Bech or Pech. I'm not sure. Uh, let's go with Bech because, you know, the, the letter sounds a bit weird. And, and basically what Mark talks to is um, some of, you know, some of the, the core um, anatom anatomical inferences to, to dealing with type typography, so things like things like um, display fonts versus script fonts versus sans serif versus serif, um, open type possibilities, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really good read. It's on the Discovery Center. And of course, um, we'll, we'll, pop, we'll pop the link uh, once, the, uh, once the, uh, the video recording goes live. Um, that will be courtesy of Susanna, I understand. A really, not, uh, a really um, good video to watch, I should say. Um, as well is this one here by our very own Suzanne Smith, which is called Experiment with Fonts. Um, I think it's kind of X7 timeframe, but really, really handy and valuable um, tutorial to kind of go through as well. So those are two for now that I would suggest that you, you may want to go and have a look at uh, post the webinar, which will kind of give you some, uh, some really good additional information around typography and the use of type within the Corel framework. So coming back to Font Manager, um, there's a whole series of icons. We're not going to do a lesson in buttonology because you will die a slow and painful death, and so will I. Um, so off the top, there essentially are, um, are two ways that one can deal and manage with font, uh, manage fonts. Um, the first is um, making Corel Font Manager aware of where your fonts are on your computer or um, online, if that may be the case. So. You'll see over here, I, for this very specific webinar, I pulled down um, a couple of stylistic fonts um, uh, and, and created a, a stylistic sets folder. You can see that these fonts, um, there's a four or five of them. Uh, this is a delicious one, lovely Melissa. I love the name as well. Um, 
So we'll be playing with some of these fonts in the examples that we'll be talking about in CorelDRAW. What I'd like to do is I'd like to start with sharing with you how to how to um, preview and manage your fonts, um, and then of course go over to Corel and show you how to deploy that in a in a design experience. Okay. So um, you can see that that um, we've got this kind of yellow bar down the left side of each of these fonts, and I'm going to jump to my fonts very quickly here. Uh, for a second, and you'll see that on the left side of, of the fonts that are currently visible, um, you'll see that um, they're green and some of them are locked, which means that they're system fonts. So if um, if you see the sidebar being green, that means that the font is installed um, in Windows and Windows is aware of it and it's available to all applications that you may be using on your computer. Whereas if they are yellow, what that means is that the font um, exists on your computer, uh, but is not installed inside of the Windows framework. But the beauty of this is that Corel can access them. So you can have a font available to your system, not necessarily installed, so it's not it's not chewing up valuable RAM, yet you can use it within, within, design, uh, within your design workflow. And what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up a workflow. So um, the very first icon is, of course, a folder icon with a plus, and if you hover over, it's self-explanatory. Hey, even I can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Add Folder button, and it's going to take me to this location called Fonts Master, which I'm going to talk to in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Select button here, and um, you'll see what it's busy doing is it's busy analyzing the fonts, it's looking for corruptions, etc., etc., etc. So while Corel is on its way, there's, I think, a 1,000-plus fonts that I'm busy um, having Corel's um, font manager um, analyze at this point in time. So what was that folder I chose? Well, that is a free um, set of Google fonts um, that you can go ahead and access of GitHub. And I, I, I learned about it courtesy of a webinar that I attended uh, with uh, Corel's product manager, um, Gerard. And I'd like to share with you uh, where you'd be able to find that. So, you know, you just go over to GitHub and you'll see that you're able to download um, the archive, the master archive from Google Fonts, and these are available to you and I free to use. So um, thanks, Jared, for that, for that, because it's a really nice um, set of fonts. So let's see then if those fonts have become available to us. So you'll see that these fonts have now all uh, been analyzed and there's a total of 1,714 of them. And you'll see pretty much none of them have been um, installed on my computer. And the value proposition, of course, is um, like you, you know, I've got a stock standard set of fonts that I that I use. And of course, as um, you become more, more seasoned as a designer, you tend to kind of gravitate around a, a family or a subset of fonts that you enjoy working with. So Emma Gray for me is, is, is a delicious set of fonts, and so is the Helveticus, uh, Helvetica family. Most, you know, that's my kind of fallback, and I'm quite sure it's yours, right? Uh, you, know, if, you know, if you're not sure, go Helvetica. Not Ariel, of course, Helvetica. Ariel is the evil step sister to Helvetica. And then, of course, what I'd like to say um, is Helvetica Noi in particular is something in terms of my personal development where I'm finding that I'm kind of gravitating towards a lot because it's, you know, just such a well-designed typeface. So um, that said, and that's how easy it is to, to kind of uh, bring in folders. Remember that you're not installing these folders. What you're, what you're basically doing is you're making Font Manager aware of these folders. And by doing that, Font Manager is able to give you real-time previews of the fonts that are in those folders. And this is where it gets really, really exciting. So what we could now do is say to Font Manager, apart from saying, you know, going through the, um, I guess, the Gigi, but it's like, hey, is the font installed? Is it not installed? Uh, do I have any duplicates, et cetera? That's pretty self-explanatory, and I'm, I'm not going to kind of yak on about that. Um, you know, if you're creating PDFs, you'll want to know whether you have embedding rights or not, because oft oftentimes you'll, you'll go ahead and use a typeface in the design, and then when you get to exporting a, a PDF to print, um, you discover that the font cannot be embedded, and then, of course, that gives you issues on rips, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and then, of course, uh, 
you have other bits and in, in, in pieces. So, um, for example, you know, certain reps don't like true types. So, and of course, you have a much wider, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, play, I guess, with open type, as I said earlier. And here you can see, I, I can go ahead and start filtering content and say, listen, I'm only wanting to look at open types. So don't show me a true type of postscript fonts. Um, and then I, I can go ahead and tell the computer what type of weight I'm looking for. Um, for example, let's look for a lightweight font, so very elegant kind of um, lightweight font. And, and we're, we're looking for a normal kind of um, X width. And we'd like it to be a sans serif. You know, so kind of your source sans pros, those types of things. Voila. So you can see a whole series of sans typefaces come up. And um, of course, you can you can kind of you can kind of even filter further. So if you're looking for a specific type of language, etc., you can go ahead and do those. Um, that all said and done, you can see now what I've gone and done is I've filtered through to a, a series of typefaces um, that are of interest to me. So this open sans, you know, has, is a potential target for me. And uh, what I'd like to do now is, of course, uh, by default, um, what Corel does is she um, she shows you um, the name of the font. But what I'd like to do here, perhaps, is I'd like to kind of target um, it very specifically to what I wanted to say. So I just want to get a good sense of, and of course, we all know of a quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, which kind of gives us a sense of the entire typeface. And of course, a very good one to use if you're in a hurry is hand gloves. So I use this when I design my own typeface. So you know, this is a good place to start um, in terms of um, uh, where we're wanting to go. So let me just jump into stylistic sets maybe and show you that more, more effectively. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear my filter here. So remember, if you don't see anything, you just need to clear the filter. And of course, you can go ahead and type whatever you wanted to say. So in this case, I'll go ahead and type in hand gloves. Where does this come from? It comes from a, a very renowned um, type designer by the name of Eric Speakerman. Um, I highly encourage, if you haven't read his book, I highly encourage you to get a copy of his book. Uh, it is called Stop Stealing Sheep and Find Out How, how Type Works. He co-authored that with um, a lady by the name of E.M. Ginger. And uh, of course, the title comes from Frederick Gaudi's diatribe about people um, letter spacing, um, black letter. Of course, you used stronger terms than stealing. I'll leave that to your imagination, but a really good read. And um, if you're wanting to kind of get more serious about typography, this is a good one to get into. And then of course, um, as you progress, another good book is a good book by James Felici called The Complete Manual of Typography, I believe. Also a really good read. Okay, so those are some resources that I'm throwing at you. Um, apart from seeing whether font is installed, uninstalled, um, available to us, not available to us, there's a whole host of other possibilities. Of, and, and, and of course, we've just spoken about previewing the typeface right here. Um, I, I was kind of um, ranting on about the beauty of this one here. So I'll go back to font and my name, which is lovely, Melissa. And um, there's some really interesting glyphs that have been built into the font. Uh, I believe 900 plus glyphs that have built, been built into this particular typeface and, and, and truly um, truly sexy typeface in my view. So on, on the far right side, um, just beyond the close button, you, you click on that, it's gonna not be very helpful because the app's gonna close, but the button just below. Um, you can see that you have um, a glyph preview. And this is uh, kind of mirrored inside of Corel itself um, through the insert character docker, which we'll talk about momentarily. But what's cool about it within the context of uh, Corel's font manager is I can go ahead and look at different possibilities here. So for example, I can go ahead and look at, um, I'd like to look at swash variants. So it's showing me all of the swashes that are available within this particular typeface. Or I may want to look at contextual lig ligatures, you know, like the FFs and FFLs and FFIs of the world etc cetera, etc cetera. and you've got standard ligatures and you know you may want to look at um, superscript and subscript possibilities um, so really um, a really interestingly designed um, font this and then of course it's got two stylistic sets um, which kind of give you a sense of the possibilities when you're working 
uh, with alternates um, in, in inside of a, inside of a typeface. So an alternate is basically where you take a letter and you replace it with with a with another iteration of that letter. Now, um, if you don't have these typefaces accessible to you within the Corel install, and and Sue kind of talks to it in in her tutorial that I showed you earlier as well is is a typeface called Gabri Gabriella, which you can go and play with, or Gabriella, uh, which you can go and play with. Um, you know, uh, post post this. So this. Filter set on the far right hand side gives us a sense of glyphs and graphemes that are specific to specific languages. For example, Cyrillic, you know, Eastern European languages, Southern African languages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, um, that said, but wait, there's more. So if you're feeling that you'd like to just go in and 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 you need to get the job done in a hurry, you don't have a lot of time, you don't have um, and, and you found an, a, a nice um, pack of fonts within the Corel Get More um, component of the welcome screen, what you could do is you could access that directly here as well within uh, Font Manager. So if you were to click on this icon, the little download icon or the plus alongside it, it goes and shares with you um, all of the packs that are available um, within the Corel content um, experience. So you can see as a modern script pack, um, of course, it's giving me a local currency in this case. It, it kind of does that kind of intelligently. So if you're sitting in the US, it's going to give you dollars. If you're sitting in India, it's going to give you rupees. If you're sitting in, um, in the UK, you're going to get pound sterling. And if you are sitting in Europe, you get euro and so on and so on. So, it, you know, Japanese yen if you're in Japan. So um, that's basically how that works. And, and these are, are, are paid for components. So everything to this point was basically, you know, at free built in to the Corel subset, which brings me to an important point. And that is, um, you know, with the advent of, of electronic software download and, of course, um, all of your clip art and fonts going online and Corel not shipping DVDs anymore, um, which I guess is not good for the planet anyway, having to ship all this plastic all over the world. Um, how, how do I get access to, to the fonts that Corel has promised me when I bought the product? And, and that is available through, uh, through this online tab here. And if you were to click on Content Exchange, you will see all of the typefaces that um, you have access to courtesy of your license of Corel Draw. And you'll see that up on the far top right, um, I'm actually signed in. So it knows who I am. It knows what type of license I have. And it gives me access to the fonts that um, that my license allows um, to me. So again, I, I can go ahead and, and, and do a quick um, filter here. So let's look at some decorative fonts. And uh, perhaps I'm looking at some fonts for packaging. So what you'll see on the far left-hand side, and this is the final thing we're going to be talking about within the context of the font manager experience. And then we're going to jump over into Corel. And I'll I beg your pardon, I'll show you how that actually comes together, okay? So, um, for example, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and flip through here very quickly. Um, and what's cool is it's very visual, um, very easy to work with. Cooper Black, you know, harking back to the to the 80s. Um, for those of us that, are, um, that, are, that recognize Cooper Black, you've just given, given away your age. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the packaging collection. You'll see how I have packaging, uh, I have collections, and I've got folders. So what's the difference? The second icon allows you to create create packaging. So I've got a UI pack, uh, you know, folder. I've got a generic MJ folder. That's stuff that I find interesting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what these collections are um, are basically fonts um, that I would create based on a project. So let's assume I'm working on Coca-Cola as an example, right? So I've got a Coca-Cola project. Um, and so, for example, you may have seen these, these kind of customized cans with people's names on it. Um, you know, you could go ahead and put a whole host of fonts that are potentially going to be used for that project, call it Coca-Cola, and off you go. So whatever, uh, whatever you know, uh, it might be. And, and they could be install fonts. They could be um, such as these. They could be um, fonts that you've not installed yet. They could be from different folder sets. So, for example, I could go to the Google font um, set over here. Um, I'm looking at uh, 
Oh, Sniglet, Sniglet looks interesting. Um, so I'll drop that into packaging. So you'll see that what I've got here is that I've got, um, I'm going through to different locations um, and um, I, I generally wouldn't use these typefaces. They're a little bit too eccentric for my for me, but I'm just giving you a sense of how this would come together, right? So um, let's, let's go over to UI. So you, you're doing UX UI design. You obviously are wanting to go for like sans serif fonts that are very clean and elegant and beautiful and easy to read on screens. Um, I'll go for normal and perhaps ex expanded as well. Um, in terms of the in terms of the type width, and we want this to be sans serif. Um, and sometimes you would use Arial, so you know I was kind of giving Arial a hard time, but I mean, um, you know, Arial is used quite heavily in, in in screen design because it's just so accessible across multiple platforms. Right, Arima looks pretty interesting as well. So you could go ahead and build your collections in this way. Um, the fonts are not being moved. Um, you know, they they just that the kind of paths are just being remembered by, by font manager. And then, of course, you can use these fonts in your workflow, in your designs, whether they're installed on your computer or not, which is just absolutely phenomenal. So those smart people in Corel, I don't know how you guys did this, but you guys deserve a belt. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swing over to um, swing over to Corel Draw so we can actually look at how this comes together in the graphic design experience, right, you guys? Um, again, if there are any questions, just holler. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I am keeping an eye on, on, on my Skype pod if there are any questions. So, so we have no questions so far, Mo. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the panel here. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Suzanne. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this particular document off. I tend to kind of, you know, create documents that are specific to a, spe uh, to a specific task in that way, keeping the file sizes compact as possible. I'm also very, very fond of working with Corel Connect, another unsung hero within the Corel suite uh, of products. So um, that said, it's probably worth me mentioning at this point in time that this is another location where you could go ahead and access your fonts if you're just kind of browsing through um, your, your your content um, that your license allows you to. So of course, apart from all of the other stuff that we have, if I were to say to the computer, listen up here at the top, please go ahead and share with me just the fonts, please. And then of course, you can see we've got all sorts of bits and bobs in terms of our clip art and there's fonts. So I can go ahead and trigger fonts. And then of course, in this particular experience, you can see it's alphabetical, so it's showing you all of the A's and the B's and the, so, and the C's and the so on and the so on and the so on. And of course, you can download those and access them this way as well. Um, I'm, I must confess with um, Site Manager uh, from Corel, I find that to be um, a nicer way for me. Uh, but we, we all work differently. So, you know, you choose your poison, I guess, right? Okay, good. So, uh, what I'm going to do at this point in time is I'm going to go ahead and um, jump into Corel Draw pro proper, and uh, we are going to. Oh, one more thing that I enjoy is, is these favorite folders. So when I'm working through a project, I can go to favorite folders and enable bitmaps, vectors, um, and fonts here. You'll see that all of the. It's, it's again visual for me. You know, I'm, I'm not very good at reading stuff, so um, this is kind of helps me along. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pop open our first project that we're going to be working with. So I'll hit F4 on my keyboard. I'll try and avoid using keyboard shortcuts so you can see where I'm going. Okay. So this is um, so it's basically uh, view. Sorry, it's one on one. So it's zoom tool and show the entire page, right? Or, or uh, no, if, uh, if I can just um, interrupt you sure. briefly, we've had a, a question coming from Prasad in India. How yes. can we use these, the font manager for our regional language fonts? Oh, um, Prasad, that's a good question. So um, you may have noticed, uh, so you're going to treat it no differently to the Roman character sets, okay? And because, and, and particularly if you're using Prasad, if you're using OpenType, it makes it even more delicious because um, any of those languages would be able to pick it up. So there's Devanagari, for example. And then what it will do is to filter just um, to that particular character range, depending on the on, on the language that you're dealing with. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, um, it's as easy as that, Suzanne. So I, I can, <laughs> you know, you guys have made it too easy. There you go. Um, I hope it answers the question. If, they, if there's a follow-up, please please feel free to throw it into the chat pod, and we we can have a, 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 a an expanded conversation about it, Prasad. So, guys, what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to make use of a again what I what I've said to you in, uh, at the beginning is I, I'd like to give you the stuff that I'm working with, so there's no smoke and mirrors. And you can go back to the office and try it out yourself, right? Because there are there are kind of limitations and challenges to a webinar in that it's slightly less interactive than an in-person engagement. So you'll see what we have going here is uh, we've got some text, and uh, I've basically gone and introduced color burn um, to bring through the texture of, of the T-shirt. I've also gone and thrown an S curve on her. So if I go over to, in fact, let me do it this way. You guys are familiar with this now. So what I, what I do is I, I open the tray. I'm going to have to wrestle with the GoToMeeting pod. So I'll move that up, and I'm going to go ahead and, and enable my, my Docker selection icon over here, which is the little plus in the circle. And you'll see that I've got tray already enabled. And what I tend to do is I, I pull the tray out when I'm working on a project to the bottom, so it's kind of easily accessible to me. So you'll see some of the elements that I've pulled, and um, I've already packaged this into a zip file and sent it on to Suzanne and, and Joe. So I guess post post the webinar when the recording goes out, you guys um, would, would have access to this. So again, no smoke and mirrors. You can see I've got the, the image from Corel's clipart library, so you guys can go and play yourselves. And um, so let's start from scratch. So, you know, two pieces of copy. I hope I'm not going to get sued by Corel yet, Suzanne, for, for, for breaking their corporate guidelines. So please forgive me. Um, um, yeah, the, fir the first thing is, um, you know, she, 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 looks, um, she looks a little flat. So an S curve will just get, get her to pop a little bit. But let's talk to the typography first. And then we'll go ahead and, 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 and jump along and, and, and play with contrast um, before we, we show it to client. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is select the word Corel. And of course, I'd like to apply um, some of the fonts from my, my stylistic set subset. Now, you'll remember, let me just clear the filters here. So it's sticky. It remembers what you did last. And whatever you worked with last, of course, appears at the top of the list, which is really, really handy as well. So you'll see that we've got a whole host of different possible filters if you were to click on this little funnel icon. Okay, so if I hide that, I see all of the fonts. And if I enable the funnel, it makes my life just a little easier. I can say, listen, show me all of the stuff in the stylistic sets. You can see some are open type by way of the O, and as true type, I tend to I tend to lean towards the open type, open type stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose lovely Melissa on that. And then of course, we saw all of those sexy um, kind of put potential glyph and, and ligature combinations. So how could we use those? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, and Suzanne talks about this in her tutorial as well, so definitely check that out, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and pop this open, and I'm going to go ahead and enable Font Playground. And uh, let's go ahead and look at that. Now, Corel makes it really, really easy for us to just get on with the job. So we could, we could go ahead and tweak this in, in Font Playground. So I can go ahead and change the copy here, all right, and then drag and drop. Or um, the methodology I tend to prefer, and again, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and just select the letter C. You'll see there's a little arrow that pops up at the bottom, and I get all these sexy ligatures that pop up, alternate sets, which I can then go ahead and choose. So if I hover over it, it gives me real-time feedback to say, buddy, is that the one you want to play with? And in this particular case, I think I'll go for that C as opposed to that subscript C. And similarly, I'll do the same with an L. So I go ahead and pop that down. How am I doing on time, by the way? Wow, time flies when you're having fun, you guys. So I'm going to have to pick up the pace a little bit. I'll talk really, really fast. OK, I'm kidding. And and and, they, and there we go. So you know we, we can play to our heart's content. What I'm going to do here is just go ahead and change the color very quickly. So I've got this oxblood color. And then I'll do the same over here. Again, what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and jump in here. So it's already filtered. Uh, I'll go for a script over here, right? Make that really large. Say something like that in terms of my design. I, I usually would throw down a rule of thirds grid on this, but um, 
you know, it just becomes a bit clumsy when you're working on a on a webinar. So there's no going to reposition that like that. I, I probably can do an envelope if I want, but um, you know, so let's say we're happy with that. Let me make this just a touch smaller. Going into design mode now, and it's a dangerous place for me because then I won't come out and I'll stop talking and you guys will, I'll, I'll just weird you out, okay? So I'll stop there. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to use some of the ligatures um, as, 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 as graphic elements, okay? So um, I'm here on lovely Melissa. So you could do this in one playground as well. So, um, I'm not, you know, you, you can obviously make those changes and drag them on. So for example, very quickly, there it is. And you can do comparative typefaces. So, you know, I could compare this to, for example, Gabriola or Kaflish Pro or whatever the case may be, you know, or, or become or whatever the case may be in terms of, in terms of script fonts, okay? Now, I'd like to make sure that I've got this other dude open and that is insert character. And I do, so you'll recall that uh, when we looked at our glyphs and our graph themes inside of inside of Font Manager, this is kind of shared with you here as well um, within within your design tool. So I can look at the entire font, um, or I can go ahead and say, listen, just show me swatch swatch variants over here, or whatever the case may be. So it's entirely up to you, um, right? So how are you gonna play with it? Play with it. So. This ampersand is looking pretty interesting. I'm going to use it as a graphic element. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out. So it's something like that. It's nested quite nicely alongside the W. So I'm going to basically click on the transform controls for a second time. I'm going to hold command in on my keyboard. Sorry, control. I went Mac on you there. My apologies. Not sure why. I'm going to go ahead and nest that in like so. Let's make it a touch smaller. That's great. So we've got a nice flow, and then um, let's have a look at some ligatures, I guess. So again, I can go ahead and, and, and um, fight about like that, or I can say, listen, show me some discretionary ligatures, please. What do you have? Mm, uh, yeah, I enjoy that. That's a double T. Again, I'm going to use it as a graphic element, nothing more. So I'll pop that maybe there, right? And then, of course, let's select, I'm going to pick up eyedropper here, uh, pick up the same color, just different ways of working, okay, you guys? Drop that in there, drop that in there. Sorry, I did that on the outline, my apologies. Let's try and hit the full. Uh, I need to zoom in and I'm too lazy. Um, so I'll just do it that way, right? So we've got all of these elements now selected. And you'll recall to get that texture going, what I did is if I go to the transparency tool, you'll see I've used a color burn here. So how does that work? Well, it's quite simple. You just basically go ahead and select all your elements and um, you can play with them um, interactively in Corel, which is really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in there and then I'm gonna go ahead and, all, and, and go ahead and punt um, color burn and we're ready to go. So what I tend to do is I tend to like to build things up. So I would go control C, control V, which is basically placed on top of, that's got a nice plasticky feel to it, right? And then, of course, um, as I said to you, what I'd like to do is just kind of throw an S curve on her just to get the, the tonal range to pop a little bit. So I'm gonna hit the edit bitmap button here, which is gonna take us over to Photo Paint. It's not a Photo Paint session, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking to Photo Paint, but I'd like to just quickly do a um, an S curve. Um, so that's gonna be by way of a lens. I'll go here, choose new lens. I'll go down to Tone Curve, hit the OK button on there. There's my lens. So I'll push that to the side so you can see what's going down. So I like lots of shadow and pop the highlights. I'm going to keep the highlights fairly fairly muted for now. Ah, oh, she's got a lovely tan now, doesn't she? So that's the before and the after. And I'm hoping you can see this on, on the webinar because it's a really cool feature. And if you, if you can't, then do try this out yourself with the files that we'll be sharing with you, right, guys? Oh, before I do that, I need to say apply, and I'm going to hit the finish editing button and say yes, please, because that kind of then round trips it back to, to um, draw. And then I'm going to close paint, um, and, and what that's going to do for me is just give me back resources in terms of memory, nothing more than that, okay? So that's that possibility. Let's do one more. Here's an example of a business card. Uh, this business card comes from Corel's template library. And uh, of course, what I'd like to do here is uh, go ahead and change this typeface. Now, 
We'll see here, um, I'm sitting on pixels, so it looks very pixelated. I'm gonna choose enhanced, which is gonna basically bump it up. Uh, I'm going to try and not use keyboard shortcut. I'm using a, a, a Wacker Mobile Studio here, which is a really nice device, by the way. So Corel interacts with it really nicely when you're drawing too. Um, okay, that said, let's go for Grumpy S. Pretty cool. Okay. So that's that's basically how this is working. So remember that these typefaces have not been installed on my computer. Um, Corel has access to them. They are on my computer, but not been installed. Uh, no other Windows application is going to be able to use these fonts, but I can do so within the Corel experience. And there's no extra kind of headroom in terms of your ex uh, in terms of your usage of RAM, which is fantastic, right? You can never have enough RAM, right, you guys? So I'm going to go ahead and close that off. And we have got about 18 odd minutes, so I'm going to move to the next thing. Um, and that is uh, talk a little bit more to um, the font playground thing. So um, when I open files, just FYI, you may, um, for those of you that are not familiar with color management, you may see this as a as an error warning. It's not. It is a color warning, and I'm a little bit pedantic about color. So every time, every time colors fall outside my specific workflow, I'd like Corel to tell me about it because I, like you, do not want un, uh, unexpected surprises, okay? And this is what this is about. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the OK button, also known as the OK button, and we're gonna create something like this very quickly. So again, uh, straightforward, simple background from Corel. Um, here's a piece of paragraph text. Let's do some stuff to it. I'm going to go ahead and make use of the object properties, uh, which is a really nice um, way you can manipulate content as well. So you could do it up here, you could do it over here. It's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear my filter so I'm seeing everything. In fact, let's just well, let me just clear the filters. Give me a sec, please. Aloha, clear filters. Good. So what I'm looking for here is I'm going to go for Gabriola this time. And the reason I'm going for Gabriola is um, you may or may not have the fonts. You probably don't have the fonts that I've been talking to. And of course, if you've got Corel's license, you're going to have this font installed, which means it's great. You can go ahead and, and muck about uh, with what I'm doing here. So you'll see that again, uh, when in doubt, draw. Very, very good advice. Uh, I can use you know, font playground, um, et cetera, et cetera. I tend to like doing it um, straight um, inside of um, Corel. So I'm just going to select that lot and you'll see it's contextual. So I can go ahead and say, okay, I want that. And um, I'm going to do it on the basis of line, which is just sexy because what it then does is it, is it um, kind of positions its focus specific to those elements. Then I'm going to go to my tray. That's where I got those elements from. I'm going to pull those out. Again, um, just a color me warning message because it's different to what I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and chunk this down in size a little bit. I still think it's a little too big. I don't want it to be weightier than my text. So I'm just going to hold control in on my keyboard and flip that around. And then, oops, sorry, I'm still in rotate mode there. Let's try that again. There we go. Again, I'm going to pump, pop that in the center. Uh, I would use alignment tools um, ordinarily, but you guys know how to do that. So um, I'm not going to do that here, but be sure to align it back. You know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> so let's select all these elements. And I'm going to head over to my align panel here. And I'm going to align to the center of the page, the page edge. So I'll just smack that like that. And know the text is there already, so I won't bother doing that. So let's bring those up. They're a little strong. Again, what I'm going to do here is just kind of share with you how I've done this. So um, if you look at any one of these guys and we look to the interactive transparency, I've used an overlay here and I've doubled up on the text. Now up here at the top, that is not part of the glyph set. That's a, a copy and paste of curves. So again, I've gone and customized the type and I've gone and moved the eye away. Now based on on, on the constraints of time, I'm not, going to show you, I'm not going to be able to show you how to do that, but you can always pick up a conversation post. Um, and I think, Suzanne, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a tutorial on how to copy and paste curves. 
um, on, on the Discovery Center, right? Um, there is. It's, it's, it's um, a fantastic use of, of, the, of the clip arts that we have. Um, if you grab your form tool, uh, you bring in basically a clip art from Coil Connect, and then you ungroup it, if, if it's a group. And then with the form tool, you can select part of that graphic. And don't forget, if you, if you want to do a freehand selection with a form tool, you hold down the Alt key. And then you can just really nicely select a part of that graphic and just copy and paste that to get a new object. Yeah, so so thanks, Suzanne. There we go. Um, I couldn't I couldn't do it better. You see, you see why why she's the grandmaster, we bow to you. Um, so thanks, Suzanne. And and of course, uh, check out Suzanne's tutorials. They're way more not they're way more intelligent than I'm than mine are. Okay, so that said. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the blend here on this, and we're going to jump to something called an overlay. Now, what you'll notice that's quite interesting, uh, if I can find it. I don't read very well. There we go, overlay. So, um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for oh, this black. Look, yeah, black's great. You'll notice that it hasn't done it on the text, right? And um, let me choose the right tool first, big tool. You'll notice that it hasn't done it on the text. What Corel wants is because text have other properties to it. It wants you to con take it to a, a curve. So I would ordinarily duplicate this and then if, for, for editability's sake, and then go ahead and choose overlay on this as well, right? So there we have it. And of course you can see it's not so strong. So I'll just do control C, control V. Um, and what that does is basically, let's try that again. What it basically does, it will strengthen um, my text, and that's beautiful. There we go. So, so that's done and dusted. We've got a kind, a kind of nice um, medieval vibe going there. I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. Adios, amigo. And the next thing I'd like to talk to you about um, is, um, of course, um, style sets. So you've got object styles. You can have paragraph styles and character styles, as, as you guys know. Um, and if you're not sure about the difference, pop that in the chat box and we can have a conversation about it. Again, I'm going to go ahead and open this guy here. And um, this is a template um, that comes from the Corel library, basically how you engage something like this. A question has just, just come in about um, object styles. Um, Amandeep is asking, he's got a problem removing styles from objects. So if you could touch on that, please, as well, Mo, while you're talking about that. Sure. So um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and pick up questions towards the end if that's okay, Amandi. But and, and as it comes through, yeah, absolutely. So um, this is where this comes from. Um, you can create new from template. Again, uh, I'm, I'm just sharing with you content um, that that looks good visually and and, and has some sort of design um, sensibility to them. Um, and, and, and so that you, so that you can go ahead and play without having to worry about copyright issues, okay? So um, here we're going to go ahead and say, um, or a that looks like a blue a, a whale a tail, doesn't it? A whale tail. There we go. A whale of a tail. Now we're getting creative. Uh, this is going to be done by um, Suzanne Smith, of course, because um, she's just good with that type of stuff. And a true story of endurance, love, and Uh, so, is that right? Yes, it is. There we go. Um, excuse the excuse the typo. Uh, so there there we go. Okay, so I got that shouldn't be right. Um, okay, so if I go over to page two, we've got some body copy over here with some crossheads. So I forget the gentleman's name. I think it's Amandi. Um, I'll try and cover that. 
And, and, and kudos to the, uh, um, to the Asians because uh, you guys love Corel. So, yeah. And I've seen some really interesting um, design coming out of Asia. Um, so that's really nice. Okay, so, so let, let's get on with this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and um, click on this. Let's close off some of these guys so we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Um, the tray, and we don't need the align anymore. Um, and, and I find this methodology of getting the Dockers just so intuitive. Hey, even I can use it. So what I want to do here, you guys, is I do want to go through to object style. So in the past, you will notice um, it's already open. You will notice that you may have noticed that they, uh, you know, you could do text and, and character styles independently. La, la, la. Now it's all kind of nested into one. So you've got style, style sets. This little guy, by the way, can be annoyingly close to the top like this. <laughs> and, and trying to spot this stand bar can be a bit of a, of a schlep. So, um, you know, you may want to just open it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and choose style sets, which will allow me to do mul or rather affect multiple properties at the same time. How so? I click on the little um, on the little um, thing here, which is called a gear, and I'm going to choose character. So you'll see the character components pop up, and I'm going to choose paragraph. So um, for the gentleman that's asking, hey, how do I get rid of um, a style, um, you simply take it back to the default object properties. And if it's a, if it's a style that um, you don't, you don't, you no longer need and you want to get rid of, you hit the button to get rid of it completely, which will take it to the default properties as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and do something quick here. I'll go ahead and choose, uh, uh, since we've got a uh, serif body copy, I'm going to go ahead and clear filters here and I'm going to go for a sans serif this time. So I'll go Calibri. Um, in fact, yeah, Calibri light is fine. And just for the sake of this particular web webinar, I'll make it large. I'll go to 24. Let's hit apply to select so you can see what's happening so far. Um, I'll choose um, I'll choose the same color as the orange, just from, from a perspective of unity in design. Good. So you'll see now it, it kind of is going to do this interactively for us. And then, of course, maybe uh, let's go for a light italic. Um, and um, I'm going to go ahead and deliberately do something bad, right? And I'll, I'll put it, I'll put it center alignment, which is horrible. But I'd like to share with you when edits happen, how it just does it on the fly, okay? And of course, you can go ahead and play um, to your heart's content. And then I'm just going to go ahead and rename this, and I'll call it crosshead. I mean, that's not how you spell crosshead, but. That's how we spell crosshead in my world, okay? Um, so that done and dusted, what we're then going to go ahead and do you guys is we're going to go ahead and apply this to a couple of additional locations, right? Like that guy there. I'll apply to select it, and we'll do it one more time there. And they all happen to say Lauren. Now, of course, you've got this 500-page book. Client comes to you and says, hey, listen, I want the body copy justified or the crosshairs. Yeah, I know what you're a smoking guy, but can you please make them flush left? Watch what happens. So I've got crosshead selected here as the style set. And if I were to come and say align left, everything's gonna align left. And then client might say, you know how you know clients are like, I'm not happy with the orange. Uh, okay, so what color do you want? Oh, you be creative, you know. So let's go out to the opposite end of the color spectrum and let's go for a nice kind of bottle green. And everything just happens on the fly. So that's, um, of course, um, style sets. Now, what is important to note is when when you and I work, um, oftentimes when 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 you guys are imaging out to devices, especially where you don't have control over the rip, uh, what we tend to do to be safe is is I've seen a lot of designers converting their text objects to paths. And of course, this has happened to you where you've converted text objects to paths and then you've gone and saved over the original file, right? Now you're in the poker. So how do we fix a situation like that? I would advise rather than converting your text to paths for output in Corel, do the following. So you could go file and you would choose publish to PDF, right? And then of course, we're gonna go into settings here. Of course, you're going to do PDF X1A and all the other bits and bobs. Uh, what I'd like you to do is come out to Objects tab over here. 
And what you can do is you can export all the text as curves without you having to manually sit and do it inside of CorelDRAW. Isn't that a cool feature? I wish you guys could respond because I think that's that has saved me a ton of time. Okay, so um, that brings us fairly close to the end of this webinar. Uh, I'd like to knock one more with your permission, Suzanne, if that's okay. Um, if, uh, unless there are questions that are, are kind of burning urgent. Um, I'd, uh, I've got a couple of questions here. I mean, it's lovely Melissa available in Corel Fonts. I'm really not sure about that, but if you go back to the Corel Font Manager and you click on um, Content Exchange, the fonts are normally listed there alphabetically. So if it is um, if it is one of one of the Corel fonts, you'll see it there. Um, Gabriola is actually a system font. So if we check out the system fonts there as well, Mo, um, you should be able to see that Gabriola is actually in there. Okay. So so uh, the first part of the question I can definitely well, answer. No, it's not part of the Corel family. Um, so lovely Melissa is not. I think it costs about $7. Uh, for the full set, which is really inexpensive. And um, to um, to Suzanne's point, uh, Gabriola is available, and that's a really nice one to have. I believe um, you guys should have access to Kaflish Pro as well, right, Suzanne? That's a really nice font as well to mess about in terms of alternates and stylistic sets. I have another question here from Amandeep. Amandeep is saying that when he's converting text to curves in the PDFs, the curves tend to look very heavy. Um, have you had any experiences with that, Mo? So what I would recommend, um, Amandeep, um, is um, I suspect you're using PDF X1A. Would that be right? Um, I, okay, I let's, can't... Let's, let's go with that. So that, that's kind of the most common, right? Um, with PDF X1A, what PDF X1A, what, um, so the, the specification on PDF X1A is that there's no, no transparency allowed. So if you use um, any of the, of the live features like transparency or um, let's do the scan and track one very quickly, uh, where we have um, you know, a beautiful drop shadow and that's interacting with text below it um, or elements below it, that's particularly text, what needs to happen is that that text needs to be converted into a bitmap um, because there's no transparency allowed in the PDF X1A specification from the ISO. So if you can handle PDF X3, or at least if your printer can handle PDF X3 natively throughout the entire print and prepress workflow, that would be my recommendation. Uh, now, um, I, I, I noticed something. Um, but it's actually uh, not to do with draw itself. Um, if um, sometimes I, if I export a document um, from Coral Draw as, as a PDF, I notice that some of the straight letters like L and I, uh, they they appear to be a bit thicker than other letters. And um, when I checked in um, Adobe Acrobat under the the settings, uh, there's a setting in there which says um, increase the width of thin lines. At now this box is checked by default and if you uncheck this box you don't get any of these thick vertical lines that you sometimes see when you're exporting text okay so again very difficult to try and troubleshoot in a, in a, in a webinar setting right so i'm hoping that's helpful for you amandeep um, so no, oh. i'm just going to sorry i'm just going to check here because mm -hmm. the time is actually up but i think we can carry on another couple of minutes i'm just going to check if we have any other questions um not at the moment okay so um th this type of thing to your to your question amandeep i mean if you've got content lying below it so you know if you had for example hmm, some text below it like this, blah, 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 and so on. And if I were to drop this below, mm, where do I want to go? I'm, I'm going to um, not do shortcuts, right? So I'm going to go shift page down is what I'm trying to say. So I'll go sh to back a page. So you can see that this is below. What's going to happen, 
let's do it like this. What's going to happen here is, uh, to Sue's point, um, this has to be cut. So this is good. This everything is raster image processor. Everything gets rasterized, right? But um, this will remain vector. So this will appear crisper. But the moment the interaction starts to happen with this transparent object, uh, Corel is forced to take those elements and convert them to pixels. Now, the very nature of, of pixelation is that to get a smooth, clean edge, there has to be anti-aliasing. And that's where the illusion of thickness comes in. So the way you can avoid that is to try and avoid transparency type elements um, of this nature, transparencies and those kind of things from lying on top of text where possible in your designs. And that's gonna help you at time. Okay, um, on that note, I would like to say um, thank you very much. And um, Suzanne, thank you for hosting me and thank you for, for um, all of your contributions. And thank you thank guys you much, for participating. So yeah, back to you, Suzanne. Um, yes, well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to join us today. This session has been recorded, and once the video is, is ready, you'll all be receiving an email with a link for accessing the video. Uh, do join us again. There are going to be more Lunch and Learn webinars throughout the year, so do join us for that. And thank you once again for attending this session. I'm now going to, going to close the webinar and wish you all a wonderful day.